Most parts of the universe is void, but when you do come across some substances, chances are it will try to kill you. In this spooky episode, we will learn about 15 scary facts from the universe. The first terrifying fact is about none other than the Great Attractor. This space anomaly is 150, 250 million light years from our galaxy and has a super powerful gravitational pull. So it can pull entire galaxies towards itself and then collapse them into each other. But what's scarier is that we still don't know what it really is. This observed attraction suggests a localized concentration of mass millions of times more massive than the whole Milky Way galaxy. But since it's lying behind the zone of avoidance, it is difficult to observe the Great Attractor directly. But we know it exists because we can observe its effects on the motion of galaxies and their associated clusters towards a certain region. Another thing we really have no idea about but know that is there is the universe's vacuum cleaner. So there is something in the space between the constellations of Centaurus and Vela that is acting very strangely. You might be getting confused, but hear me out. These unknown massive structures that act like giant vacuum cleaners suck galaxies towards itself and tilt our universe. <clears throat> and the problem is this mysterious thing is too far away for us to see. But we can observe that galaxy clusters are moving toward this small patch of space at an unbelievable speed. Even though some scientists dub this as dark flow, some assume it can be the evidence of multiverse's existence. So if you think we already figured out the laws of universe, you might be wrong. For now, the universe we are studying might have not shown its real face to us directly yet. If you're not impressed with universe's unexpected tricks, here's one that'll make you feel like walking in a haunted empty house. Because astronomers have discovered a vast region of space that is almost empty compared to other parts of the universe. It has very few galaxies, which is unusual, so sometimes scientists refer to it as the Great Nothing. The void, which is officially called as Boots Void, is one of the largest known voids in the universe. So this supervoid is known to contain only 60 galaxies in a space that would usually have about 2,000 galaxies. The scale of this void is so big that if the Milky Way had been in the center of the Boutes Void, we wouldn't have known there were other galaxies until the 1960s. First of all, what makes a galaxy alive? Its ability to constantly form new stars. But what if I tell you that there are galaxies that stopped this important process just a few billion years after the Big Bang? So basically, they are dead. After making a few stars here and there, they ran out of cold gas or somehow forgot how to use this fuel. Although what really caused the death of these galaxies is still a mystery, we know that they have been dead for the last 11 billion years. It is said that in space no one can hear your screams, because it's mainly vacuum. But interestingly, in parts of the universe where interstellar dusts and gases are intense, certain sound waves can be carried through gas and plasma. Of course, you can't hear these sounds directly, but with the help of technology, it can be picked up. Here's the sound of the planet Uranus. It sounds very creepy, right? Then listen to our stars' sounds. our home planet, Earth. And last but definitely not least terrifying sound of a black hole. So black holes with their mysterious vibes and sounds are creepy enough. But have you ever thought what would happen if you ever fell into a black hole? Well, scientists assume that near a black hole, the stretching and compression are so powerful that no object can resist it. Within a small region, the horizontal compression balances the vertical stretching so that a small object, in this case you being spaghettified, experiences no net change in volume. The reason this happens would be that the gravitational force coming from a black hole would be much stronger at one part of a body than the other. So if you were to fall into a black hole feet first, the gravity at your feet would be much stronger than at your head causing you to be vertically stretched. Along with that, the right side of your body will be pulled to the left, and the left side of your body will be pulled to the right. Doesn't it sound very exciting? If you're interested in space exploration, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We've talked about all the scary events happening in far, far away from us, but not the Carrington event. This was the most intense geomagnetic storm in recorded history, peaking especially from 1 to the 2nd of September 1859. 
It is very likely that the geomagnetic storm was the result of a coronal mass ejection from the sun colliding with Earth's magnetosphere. The geomagnetic storm was associated with a very bright solar flare. As a result, it created strong auroral displays that were seen around the world, and these auroras were so bright that people would think it was morning during night times, and others could read newspaper with aurora's light. But that's not all. The Carrington event caused sparking and even fires in multiple telegraph stations. Even in some cases, telegraph systems were giving electric shocks to their operators. What's more shocking is that some operators were able to continue to send and receive messages despite having disconnected their power supplies. Here's a real conversation between two operators about this unbelievable case. While one of them is in Boston, the other one is in Portland. Please cut off your battery entirely for 15 minutes. Will do so. It is now disconnected. Mine is disconnected, and we are working with the auroral current. How do you receive my writing? Better than with our batteries on. Current comes and goes gradually. My current is very strong at times, and we can work better without the batteries, as the aurora seems to neutralize and augment our batteries alternately, making current too strong at times for our relay magnets. Suppose we work without batteries while we are affected by this trouble. What a time to be alive, right? If a geomagnetic storm of this magnitude occurred today, this would cause widespread electrical disruptions, blackouts, and damage due to extended outages of the electrical power grid. But if I tell you that we were almost the target of a very similar solar superstorm again in 2012, this solar storm was unusually large and strong coronal mass ejection that occurred on July 23, 2012. Lucky us, it missed Earth with a margin of merely nine days. Thankfully, the outburst was not pointed directly towards Earth, only because this time the planet was not in the way. The strength of the eruption has been predicted to be comparable to the 1859 Carrington event. Can you imagine all the chaos if we're hit with it? Although the eruption still managed to tear through Earth's orbit and hit the Stereo A spacecraft. The spacecraft is a solar observatory equipped to measure such activity. And because it was far away from the Earth and thus not exposed to the strong electrical currents, it survived the encounter and provided scientists with valuable data. But if that storm came a week earlier, it would have hit the Earth and caused a global blackout so devastating that we'd still be recovering from it. So we mentioned that space is mostly vacuum, which means it's ready to decompress you if you stepped out of Earth's atmosphere without a spacesuit. When an astronaut suffers decompression, the moisture and oxygen in their body gets ripped out, causing their body to swell up and explode. In fact, a very similar incident happened here on Earth. In 1965, a technician inside a vacuum chamber at Johnson Space Center in Houston accidentally detached a hose in his suit while working and got depressurized. After 12 to 15 seconds, he lost consciousness, and after 27 seconds, he regained it as his suit was repressurized to about half that of sea level. Thankfully, his co-workers were able to save his life in time. The man reported that his last memory before blacking out was of the moisture on his tongue beginning to boil. He was also unable to taste anything for four days following the accident, but he was otherwise unharmed. The next fascinating story come from rebellious planets. If you think every planet in the universe orbit a star, you might have not heard about rogue planets. These rebels are not gravitationally bound to any other object. Some of these rogue planets may first exist in a planetary system and then got kicked out, but some of them can also form on their own, outside any system. The Milky Way alone may have billions to trillions of such planets. Most of them were highly likely knocked out of their orbit by another body, and now they on their way to do the same. They will roam through space until their course is altered or stopped by another cosmic body. But that isn't even the scariest part. It's assumed that these rogue planets outnumber the stars. That is a lot of untamed planets wandering around the universe so they can knock someone else out of their orbit. Now, we know that vampires are not real on Earth, but the universe has endless possibilities. So why not to have a bunch of vampire stars that can suck the life out of other stars? That's true. Finally, in some parts of universe, vampires do exist. Scientifically, they are known as O-type stars. So basically, these vampire stars are enormous blue giants attached to much smaller stars and literally consume these little babies by using a powerful gravitational pull but you can't live long after causing someone else's life, except if you are a politician. FBI, open up! 
However, vampire stars are not politicians, so they don't last long either. Once it consumes a smaller star, an O-type star explodes into a beautiful supernova. This is because so much mass and energy is accumulated into it as a result of its insatiable hunger, and then its own gravity literally tears it apart. End of a villain. Just like vampires, cannibalism also exists in other parts of the space. Galactic cannibalism is a process in which a large galaxy merges with a neighbor galaxy through tidal gravitational interactions. Most of the time, this process results in a larger but very irregular galaxy. The creepy part is that it has been suggested that galactic cannibalism is currently occurring between our precious Milky Way and the large and small Magellanic clouds. Well, let's see who's gonna eat who. As a side note, galactic cannibalism should not to be confused with galactic collision, in which galaxies collide but maintain their original forms. Another fiction on Earth is actually a fact in the vast universe, zombies. So astronomers have observed in a relatively nearby galaxy a white dwarf star that reached a mass threshold that caused thermonuclear reactions in its core that made it detonate in a supernova. Generally, stars get destroyed during this process. So it should have been this star's death as well. But our hero is a true zombie. The star not only survived it, but actually came out of it brighter than ever before. But how? Scientists say that during the explosion, radioactive material was being produced. And this is what actually powers the brightness of the supernova. And interestingly, some of this material was left over in the surviving remnant star and acted as fuel to heat the remnant. What was the spookiest fact you learned today? Let us know in the comments.